This is a brief overview of physical and human characteristics of the UK. Let's start with what the UK is. So the UK is four countries. Um, you've got Scotland, you've got Wales, you've got Northern Ireland, and you've got England. If we were just to take this island with the three countries of England, Wales, and Scotland, that's called Great Britain. If you take everything on this map, which includes the Republic of Ireland, that's called the British Isles. But we're concentrating on these four countries, which is the United Kingdom. Let's launch straight into the physical characteristics of the UK. You can see here a relief map. Now, a relief map just shows the shape of the land, where high land is, where low land is. The darker colours, the dark brown, shows where mountains are. So we have mountains here in Scotland, the Northwest Highlands and the Grampian Mountains, and then we have the Southern Uplands. We've got mountains here in England, the Pennines and the Lake District and the Peak District. And here within Wales, we've got the Cambrian Mountains, we've got Snowdonia. Most of the UK's mountains are found to the north and to the west, including these um, mountains of Northern Ireland. So north and west, we have our mountains. Now, if we compare that to a rainfall map of the UK, it's almost identical. We get the majority of our rain, which is the dark blue colour, here to the north, which matches perfectly with the mountains, and over to the left or the west of the country, which again matches perfectly with our mountain ranges. So it's drier to the south than to the east where we have lowland and it's wetter to the north than the west where we have our upland, our mountains. Now the reason for this is relief rainfall, um, which works like this. Moisture evaporates from the Atlantic Ocean, condenses to form clouds, and then the prevailing winds come from the west and blow these clouds, this moist air, towards the land. As the moist air hits the mountains, it is forced to rise, and as it rises, it cools and condenses, forming thick clouds, and then we get rainfall above the mountains, which is known as relief rainfall. As the air goes down the other side of the mountain, it is dry. And so you get very little rainfall on the other side of the mountain, which is known as the rain shadow. So that is the story of relief rainfall, and that explains why it's so wet in the UK above the mountains. Now let's have a look at some human characteristics of the UK. This is a um, population density map. Um, population density just meaning the number of people per square kilometer. And the blue areas are the areas where people are living in the largest concentrations. So here is London, here is Cardiff, um, Birmingham, Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds area, etc. So these are the areas of highest population density. And we get high population density in low-lying areas. And we get high population density where large cities grew during the Industrial Revolution. There are also areas of good transport and a moderate, moderate climate. Now let's concentrate on factors affecting um, this population density. Here's a countryside area with very few people living in a square kilometre. And here is a city area or urban area with a very high population density. Let's have a think why. Number one, flatland good for building. So this gives us a high population density. Another one, um, you'd have had fertile land, very good for farming. If we take the area with the steep slopes, very difficult to operate your tractor and your combine harvester. Also, um, because of the steepness of the slope, you get runoff or overland flow. The water goes over the land rather than into it. This gives a less good soil for farming. Um, also, you get less sunshine during the day on steep slopes um, and more inclement weather. Plentiful supplies of water in areas where high population density, lots of raw materials for industry, things like rock and woodland, um, and as I said, good farming. Moderate climate means nothing too extreme. 
extensive forests and woodlands, um, huge advantage for building materials in forests, but also originally hunting for wildlife that be living in the forest um, and making things for transport, such as canoes and ships. And then cities are providing opportunities for work. Most of these areas grew hugely during the Industrial Revolution of the 1800s. Let's now have a look at land uses in the UK. What is the function of the land? What is the main thing that's done on the land? 12% of UK is covered in urban areas, cities and towns. Now the actual area that's built on is 6%. The other 6% being people's gardens and parks within cities and open areas within cities. So amazingly, only 6% of the UK is built upon. 20%, one fifth is farming land, arable meaning crop farming. And then 44% is grassland, which is grazing land for animals such as cows and sheep and things like that. 13% of the UK is covered in trees or woodland and 7% is mountain and moorland, leaving us with only 1% of the entire country covered in lakes and rivers. Finally, we're going to look at two issues that are facing the UK, water stress and housing shortages. We'll start with water stress. An area that's stressed is an area where water is in limited supply, but there's a very large and growing demand for water. So if we look at this diagram here, it's the southeast where there's the largest amount of water stress. Why? Firstly, we've seen earlier in this presentation that it rains in the north and it rains in the west. So the first reason is you get very little rain in the southeast. The next reason is that London, the capital city, is here with 8 million people living in it. So you've got a large demand for water, there being so many people, but um, less water um, comes down in terms of rain than the rest of the country in the north and the west. Now, how can we solve these issues of water stress? Firstly, we can transfer water, get rivers, canals, pipelines, move the water from where we have too much in the northwest, we have a surplus, to the south and east where we have a shortage. For example, um, pipelines take water from the Cambrian Mountains of Wales to Birmingham, a good solution. Number two, we can construct new reservoirs in the southeast of the country. A reservoir is a place where you store water for when it's in need. Reservoir means reserve water. Um, so if we build more of these, they store and collect water during the winter. So you've got water in the summer when there could be a drought. Thirdly, you can encourage people to save water and use less water. Um, leaflets could be given out, um, children could be educated within the school, you could have internet campaigns, etc., to get people to save their water. Um, here's an example of a leaflet showing what could be done to cut down on water usage to save water. Our next issue is housing shortages. Um, within the country, there is a shortage of houses, especially or first-time buyers um, or people who don't earn so much. So in order to house our growing population, the UK needs to build 240,000 homes a year because our population is expanding. However, we only build half that number. The result is that houses are too expensive for many people to buy or rent, especially in the southeast of England, the most crowded part of the country. It's estimated 15,000 homes need to be built in London alone over the next five years. With so much space, why do we have a housing shortage? Well, here's three reasons. Number one, every time you build houses, you need planning permission. There's often opposition to do this. So number one, it's quite difficult and involves a lot of paperwork in order to build new homes. Number two, land around many cities is protected by the government as green belt with strict planning controls. And so to have new houses built, you need a change in government policy again something that isn't easy to happen and then finally number three the price of land keeps rising 
So landowners hold on to their land in the hope the price will continue to rise instead of releasing it so that houses can be built.